Now, before I start to read you this article, I want to let you know that this is quite a long article, but damn it, it's fucking worth it. I know you guys love hearing about deportations and immigration related issues, and I love reporting on deportation and immigration issues. So, like I said, this is going to be quite a long article, so please bear with me, but it'll be fucking worth it, trust me. Immigration arrests and deportations increased significantly during the past year in Iowa and its neighboring states. Federal data shows those numbers have spiked under the heightened focus on enforcing U.S. immigration laws by President Donald Trump's administration. Immigration arrests are up 67% and deportations are up 55% in the region that includes Iowa. Deportations and immigration arrests are similarly up in states like Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, Missouri, Kansas, Nebraska, and South Dakota, the data also reveals. After making immigration reform one of the central staples of his campaign, Trump immediately instructed his administration to enforce the nation's immigration laws more forcefully. The Trump administration said it would continue to prioritize immigrants in the country illegally, who also have been convicted of other crimes. Approximately 11 million immigrants live in the United States without legal residency, according to the Pew Research Center. Anyone who is in the United States illegally is subject to deportation, Trump said during a September 2016 campaign speech in Arizona. Shortly after he took office, Trump's administration began the work of enforcing the stronger immigration policy. Under this executive order, with extremely limited exceptions, the Federal Department of Homeland Security will not exempt classes or categories of removal aliens from potential enforcement. All of those in violation of the immigration laws may be subject to enforcement proceedings, up to and including removal from the United States, reads a February 2017 department fact sheet. The guidance makes clear, however, that the Federal Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency should prioritize several categories of removable aliens who have committed crimes, beginning with those convicted of a criminal offense. That focus has produced significant increases in immigration arrests and deportations. According to federal data, the Federal Immigration Enforcement Agency does not keep state-level data, but does track regional data. A spokesman of the agency said, I Iowa is included in a five-state area that includes Minnesota, Nebraska, and the Dakotas. Deportations in the five-state area increased 55% and immigration arrests jumped to 67% from the state budget year that ended in September 2016. Just before the 2016 elections to the state budget year that ended in September 2017, according to the federal data, and enforcement did not just focus on immigrants with a criminal history. The number of deportations of immigrants without a criminal conviction jumped 74% from the 2016 to 2017 budget years, and the number of arrests nearly tripled. In a recent report, a federal immigration official told the Washington Post the department and Trump administration is simply restoring the rule of law. Quote, what are we supposed to do? Matthew Emblance, the top official in the agency's Immigration Enforcement Division, told the Washington Post, if the department does not uphold its duties and enforce immigration laws, then the system has no integrity. Iowa immigrant advocacy groups are tracking numbers in Iowa to the best of their ability via the Immigration Enforcement Hotline that was created in February 2017, a month after Trump took office. According to the groups, in the past year, 64 Iowa families have reported deportation, detention, or surveillance by federal agents, and the targets have lived in Iowa from six months to 15 years. Two beneficiaries of federal protections for immigrants who were brought here to the U.S. illegally while they were children have been been detained by federal authorities, the advocacy group said. More than four out of every five reported arrests took place early in the morning when immigrants were on their way to work, and federal agents have targeted a handful of central Iowa Mexican restaurants, the advocacy groups also said. Quote, they're in survival mode as it is, said one of the immigrants under threat of possible arrest or deportation. They're just trying to put food on the table and get their kids educated. But now deportation are disturbing their families. Federal agents are splitting families apart. 
Well, like I told you in the beginning, that that article would be fucking well worth it. As you just read, deportations in South Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, Missouri, Kansas, Nebraska, and Iowa are all up, have increased 55%, and immigration arrests jumped to 67%. This is absolutely amazing news to hear. You see, the more people that Trump deports from these states, the more likelihood of the states will go for him in the 2020 presidential election. But I think my most favorite part of the article was the little section where it said the number of deportations of immigrants without a criminal conviction jumped 74% from 2016 to 2017. And the number of arrests of illegal immigrants without a criminal conviction has nearly tripled. I think that is the best news of the entire article. One, that immigration and deportations are up in four states that most likely lean more blue than red, and that deportations and immigration arrests of illegal immigrants without a criminal conviction is up 74% and has nearly tripled when it comes to immigration arrests. This is why I voted for Trump, and this is why many of you voted for Trump also, is to get these people out of our country, rather they be criminal illegals or non-criminal illegals. It doesn't fucking matter. They're here illegally, get them the fuck out of the country. And we also voted for Trump to put back our immigration laws the way they were when our country was in a massive incline in economic growth and other sectors of growth. Now, a lot of people will label Trump the money president. And to all honesty, he most likely is. He is a very money-oriented president. And I want him to be money-oriented. I want him to fix the economy, fix jobs, and fix our taxes. And so far, he's done an amazing job in this area. But on the side, he's also even doing better when it comes to immigration and deportations. You see, I, I fucking love reporting on immigration and deportation issues. I mean, when I hear that these immigrants are being deported left and right, I mean, I get the fucking jingles. Like, I just get so happy. It's like a fucking ecstasy moment for me. To know that our country is headed back towards a good area area, a good position, I would say, that we haven't been in in decades. We, as the American people, deserve law and order, we deserve tax breaks, and we deserve to come first in our own country. But somehow, to the liberal left, becoming first in your own country, American problems that come first in America somehow obviously make you a complete racist and bigot. And these are things that usually irritate me about the left, is that they don't understand economic economics. They don't understand how things work. They don't care about law and order. The only time they care about law and order is when a Democrat is in office. And when a Republican is in office, that's when they want to cry and pout and say how things are unfair. And everything that our Republican president does is somehow evil, despicable, against the rules and what have you. Even if the same Democratic president of the past did the exact fucking same things, or in our case with Obama, did fucking worse. Now, I don't live in Missouri. I don't live in Illinois. I don't live in any of these states. As a matter of fact, I live pretty far away from them. I live in Las Vegas, Nevada, Sin City, it fucking self. And as far as I'm concerned, my state hasn't had any real news about deportations or immigration arrests as by far. But don't get me wrong, I'm not a pessimist. I am very optimistic about Trump's future as the president. I am very optimistic about the future of our country. The American people are finally getting the break that they deserve in terms of tax breaks, they're getting their jobs back, and everything seems to be going good, economically speaking. And as far as the deportations and immigration immigration arrests. It, it, it's fucking good, but I have faith in Trump to do fucking better. I dare him to do better than this. I dare Trump to make that immigration and deportation percents go up hundreds of percent, 110 percent, 130 percent. I believe he can do better, but we cannot ask him for that much as of now. He's been in the office. He's been our president for a little over a year now, and so far he's been doing amazing. He's been doing absolutely fucking amazing. He 
he has done better than Obama did in terms of economic growth. In the all eight years that Obama was president, he never gave us such a fucking humongous tax break. As a matter of fact, he actually raised the taxes a few times there to pay for his, you know, butt buddies bullshit. But Donald Trump is doing real good things for America. And I, for one, am ecstatic about the future or what the future holds for America. There is consumer confidence again within the stock market and within the economy itself. People are feeling more confident. People are getting more more money back. These illegal immigrants, rather they be criminal illegals or non-criminal illegals, are being deported from our fucking country. Trump has given us a huge, huge tax break that we haven't had since fucking Ronald Reagan. And as a matter of fact, the Trump tax bill is even further right than Ronald Reagan's tax plan was. So that's even a bigger plus for Donald Trump. But like I said in the beginning, this article, this piece of news report would be fucking worth Worth it and I think you can judge on yourself if it was worth it or not I personally think it was to know that so much immigration so much deportations are happening across America makes me sleep so much better at night now like I said it's not outstanding but it's good it's good for his first year in office and as things continue to grow and get better we can expect Donald Trump to have another seven years continuing this process and I am optimistic that he will get that that chance. And that's it for this video. Peace out, guys.